Hey, welcome everybody. I'm uh, very much looking forward to our Bible study that we're going to be going through now. We are moving on to the book of Daniel. Uh, Daniel is a very exciting and uh, fun book to study through. One of the things I have noticed, though, is in doing studies through the book of Daniel, that uh, sometimes you get set out in the book of Daniel and you go through chapters 1 through 6, and then you look at reading through chapter 7 and 8, it's like, oh, uh, I forgot this was in here. It's time to do something else. And so I do want to let you know, we will go through the full book of Daniel, chapters 1 through 12, in this study. And the book of Daniel is divided up in two main sections, uh, chapters 1 through 6, and then chapters 7 through 12. 1 through 6 give us the details of some of the events and things that take place in the, event, in the lives of Daniel, and uh, as we know them by the Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then chapter 7 through 12 are actually more dealing with some of the visions and, and some prophetic things that are going on there. And so that's, that's what to be looking forward to as we study through the book of Daniel. Well, hey, we're going to be in chapter 1 today. We're just going to go through verses 1 through 7. This will be kind of uh, laying down a little bit of the foundation for us and the setting of the book of Daniel. So let's go ahead and read through a portion of this, and then we'll stop and and kind of share, kind of look into what's, what's happening here. So, verse 1. It says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem, and he besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the vessels of the house of God. And he brought them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. And then the king commanded Ashpenaz, the chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish, of good appearance, skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace to teach them the literature and the language of the Chaldeans. I'll stop right there. This is verses 1 through 4. So, uh, this starts off in laying out the setting for us and some of the main people to be aware of. And it says that this is the time of King Jehoiakim. King Jehoiakim. And he has rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar. King Jehoiakim, the king of Judah. Now, remember that Israel is divided up into two kingdoms at this point. This is nearing the end of the divided kingdom. Uh, Israel has already been... Uh, conquered by the Assyrians, but now the, the, the uh, tribes of Judah and Benjamin, who are in the southern kingdom, they're about to be taken over by the Babylonians and brought into captivity. So you have Israel, and then you have, down here you have Judah, these two kingdoms that were separated and divided. And what we're seeing here now is that the kingdom of Judah is now experiencing the judgment of God because they have rebelled against God. They've not served God. Uh, there's been periods of good kings and times of where they have served God faithfully, but they have not been faithful to the covenant that they had made with the Lord. And God had said that if they do not uphold the covenant, covenant, He would judge them. He would bring them into captivity, but He's also promised that He would bring them back. And so now we are at the time of the King Jehoiakim, King Jehoiakim, and he is seeking to um, rebel against the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, who is the dominant king in the region, the area, who's taken over places and essentially has kind of made this arrangement with Judah that as long as you do not rebel against me, and I will allow you to exist. But Jehoiakim has sought to rebel against him, and this has backfired, and this has not gone well. And so he has been, uh, Nebuchadnezzar has sieged Judah and sieged Jerusalem. And then he has taken this king, Jehoiakim, as well as some other of the, the young men of royalty and nobility of Jerusalem, of Judah, and taken them into captivity back to Babylon, as well as items and articles from the temple. And... Uh, so many of these things were taken from the temple and brought into captivity there, which is 
is going to mark the end of the worship in the temple for a period of time here very soon as the temple would be ultimately would be destroyed. What we see here though is um, a a bringing the finest of Jerusalem to Babylon and what the plan is that these are, are youthful, it says they're without blemish, they are healthy, attractive, they are skillful in wisdom and knowledge and understanding and what he wants to do is make them competent to serve him. That is the plan here. Now in verse 5 it continues, it says, The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. And they were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time they were to stand before the king. And among those were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel he called Belteshazzar, Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. So the plan is three years of training. Three years of training in the, uh, the literature and the language of the Chaldeans, the Babylonian language and their literature. They're going to be trained in this, they're going to be indoctrinated in this, and what they're going to, be, they're going to do is have them serve in the court for King Nebuchadnezzar. And so this is the setting and this is what we're looking at. And so during this time, they're going to get to experience some of the finer things that Babylon has to offer. And so they're going to get to experience the food from the table of King Nebuchadnezzar, which is going to be the finest food there, as well as the wine, the drink that he has uh, that the King Nebuchadnezzar partakes of. So this is the setting, and this is getting ready to introduce the first tension, uh, the great tension that these young men are going to deal with and how they're going to respond to that. And we're going to look into that next time as we continue through Daniel chapter 1. See you then.